for this weekend? He's going to be moving around and playing catch, progressing his tolerated this week. Um, I won't. I, I don't think for any of the guys I'll put like a, an exact whether it's Micah, Brady, uh, Aiden, or anyone else. I just kind of. Um, we're going to see what they're feeling like today, moving around and progressing and, and throwing and hitting and running for um, each, each respective guy. So, um, but like I said uh, the other day, attitudes are all in a good spot, bodies responding well, feeling well. So um, I'm, I'm excited and curious as to how today goes for everyone too. So I'll be uh, running around uh, up and down the line, checking on each and every guy. and. How they how they responded um, after a day off, which would be nice. So, is that would would we be able to describe them as day to day or questionable, or how would you suggest we label their status? And when you're we get... an incredible journalist, I think your your wording on it will be will be gossip. I'd say like um, you could call it day to day, but okay. like really, it's just uh, when you get a good idea on how the guy's feeling. It's also the progression on it. If a guy's throwing. You know, 120, 150 feet, and how he's responding to that. And also, discussions of, hey, if we're getting long toss in, that's great, and feeling good, ripping down on the ball. But now it's we want to make sure we're putting a hitter in the box first and getting out on the game mound because uh, easily, especially with some uh, uh, nicer weather coming in this weekend, you know, you get more fans in the stands, people excited, then you're amping up to a whole nother level. So we want to make sure that we're progressing it the right way but I think a lot's going to be determined on how today feels okay what has he been doing like has he been throwing bullpen sessions the last week uh, just catch play just catch okay you know just catch play moving around um just making sure the body's staying okay. in a good spot so uh but I wouldn't say like you know he hasn't thrown a session there's, there's not no not not sitting there ripping down the mound yet I'm limiting everyone on that yeah so. and it's still it's not warm it's supposed to be nicer so that probably plays into how you would approach it too, just generally speaking. I mean, I'm sweating yeah. like right now. Just, <laughs> yeah. You can see the sweat trickling down like a sauna. Um, yeah, but it says it's going to be 50 and, and oh. um, you know, uh, no rain on Thursday, Friday. Not going to worry with that one. Okay. Um, but, you know, compared to the, the chill last week yeah, and yeah. Uh, nice that we didn't, anyone wasn't bringing it up or complaining about it, you know, just throw the hand warmers in the back pocket and go about your business. Okay. But, um, I don't know. I think going through that is also a valuable thing yeah. in North Coast State. <laughs> As they were saying, hey, it's 50 degrees back home. We come out here and it's uh, a little chillier. Yeah. I swear it's not like this all the time. <laughs> Was, is Kyle a situation or is that just he hasn't had a, you haven't had a chance to put him out there? No, I, yeah, he was uh, a little tight as well. So we we're just keeping an eye on him. But he's feeling really good um, and starting to progress as well too. I think last weekend... It wasn't one of those things where like, hey, let's let's ramp it up and, yeah. and get in here again. Uh, preseason, I think a lot of it is gearing up, making sure that we're ready for conference play. Mm -hmm. um, you know, probably going to be a little chilly down in Utah yeah. for I was thinking about that opening yeah. of conference play. But um, you know, I think that was kind of the the goal is make sure like, last weekend, this weekend, we're not going to be overly aggressive. Um, so a lot of the a lot of the conversation with guys want to do and get up there and start throwing i'm like but i'd rather pull the reins on him mm -hmm. than have to push him too much so um you know he's in that progression phase as well okay my last bug is is wilson is is that tanner or is it just did he ding something and in, in no he's surprise? yeah he was uh he also had a little something going on uh trying to keep small problems small um and i i'd say but through this last weekend, he was feeling better and better each mm -hmm. day. Today, he's probably going to go out and have a full-on practice, uh, mm -hmm. probably get some live ABs off some of the arms, too. And as long as that looks good, then he should be um, a full goal for this weekend based on what I'm hearing and mm -hmm. seeing how he's moving. Um, but he had some stuff just was lingering and mm -hmm. trying to stay hot and ready to go in any given time. And really, if there was a situation, he was ready to go in uh, if needed this last weekend. But... You know, Tanner was looking good, and we didn't want to push it for, for Webby. So, okay. uh, didn't want it to turn into a multi-month deal. I'd rather turn it into just a couple days. We we talked to um, Tanner before, just about his work and his you know come down on weight and his yeah. longer and whatnot. How have you seen him and you know sort of go on that sort of transformation and try and you know 
be healthier and be stronger for you. Yeah, it was good. I, I think once we finished up with the the regional, um, you see, just he wanted to make changes and he kind of got hit with that pretty good and said, I'm going to do whatever it takes to get bigger, faster, stronger and make sure I can thrive through the end of the season. I mean, he was upset with how his body was feeling at the end of the year and it goes to sleep, it goes to nutrition, it goes to conditioning yourself. So um, he kind of just gave gave up uh, taking off or doing anything other than being here and working, putting time in the weight room. Um, and so it's fun to see his body respond to that and to go out and catch four games in chilly weather. You know, that's a good sign for um, where your body's at. And even on the last day to uh, be successful at the plate, you know, when your legs typically are not feeling great. But if you want to do it at the next level, you're going to have to do it, you know, four or five, maybe even six or seven times a week, uh, depending on the time of year. So how would you describe his defensive ability behind the dish? Really catch and throw. Yeah. I mean, there's no doubt. Really receive. I mean, you look at uh, each of the aspects. He puts it on the bag every time. Mm -hmm. um, Is it like two for nine or something or two for seven? What, as far as throwing out? Yeah, got only... Uh, two for nine? Two for seven. Two for seven. Yeah. It's been solid, yeah. Against. Okay, that's good. Yeah. yeah. But, I mean, accurate catch play. And a lot of times, like, you can't look at every stolen base as um, equal to another because, you know, is the pitcher slow? Is it a bad, tough pitch to throw on? Yeah. Did they guess right? But what I will say is he always puts it on the money when he plays catch. You know, he's even looking for back picks right now, which is very encouraging. Mm -hmm. Um, frames a good ball too. He does. He works yeah. the low pitch really well. Um, you know, having true media and synergy and all these other metrics, we can see where guys are are getting are keeping strike strikes and where they're getting balls out of the zone. Those fringe pitches called strikes. And he's always done a good job on the low pitch because he sets up low and he works up through it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, also, you know, one thing Weber does a really good job at is the top of the zone and the corners. Mm -hmm. And so. We try to it's good that those guys work together so they can push each other to uh, get better at their at their I guess weaknesses or I guess where they're not as strong mm -hmm. um, but you know the one thing we keep pushing him on is keep uh, he's got such good hands we keep pushing him to block the ball mm -hmm. you're right and it, there's just some confidence that that goes with that and so he's you bring it up to him you show him some video and he continues to get better on it mm -hmm. and, uh, coach Esposito does a great job pushing those guys um, I, I say like you know, don't 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 kill him down there. I mean, he loves to work them. They they pound the machine on them, whether it's just for receiving or ball and dirts. But mm -hmm. uh, they get a ton of work in, and I love that environment from our catchers showing up before everyone else and leaving after everyone else, being the guys that clean up the kitchen. You name it, mm -hmm. um, we do have a really good core group of guys by the dish. Sounds like he's a chef at his house. He's just making everybody meals. Do you Tanner? know about this? Yeah. I guess he's like a Julia Childs or something in there. <laughs> like, are we talking about microwave? No, I'm oven? talking we, like no, he, meals. He's apparently throwing down on some steak. He's bringing it now, have we seen this or is this just... This is word of mouth. <laughs> but it was from, a, good. We're it was from one of his roommates, <laughs> so. So it wasn't like, you know, just from a random yo. Uh, right, but it depends on which roommate, right? Uh, a home-cooked meal, what, is that, what does that really mean? We asked him, he claimed... Does that mean he said like... Top ramen and it, dino nuggies? He said, he said steak and crunch wraps, like yeah. homemade crunch wraps. It, it was from Eric, who's a freshman, so yeah. Their, their meals Bar's might low. be a little interesting. Bar's low. Well, I mean, I've, I've, all, I also know that Eric's parents are phenomenal cooks as well, and they make some really, really good grub. So the source is it, good. It must be, it must be good. Mm. High appreciation. If Tanner is a good chef at the house, maybe he's just you know taking care of his nutrition as well and sharing it amongst the house. <laughs> Say you're making meals for everybody, Tanner. I, 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 I asked, was See? it was it top ramen and dino nuggies or was no, it? No, no. I just what's, question. What's your go -to I don't meal over there. Go to? I, I don't know. I kind of cook everything. Give me like two mm. or three meals. Um, I make a good like crunch wrap. Yeah, we we know, heard heard that one. Crunch wrap. Crunch wrap. Um, steak, potatoes, broccoli, all that type of stuff. Like just scalloped potatoes stuff, or like or like, just baked? Like mashed potatoes. I like mashed potatoes. I make a mean mashed potatoes. There you go. A lot of butter. Hmm. Keep the skins on or skins no, off? Skins off, absolutely no skins. <laughs> <laughs> Got to discriminate against the skins, man. I, 
I prefer the texture. Yeah, keep them in. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, you know, speaking of catchers, I was reading into Easton Tolls a little bit of, from his high school uh, scouting report. Yeah. I didn't see anything mentioned about him playing catcher in high school. Is that something you guys have taught him to do here? No, he always uh, had a little bit of that in, in the bag as well. He's a big-time athlete, so he can do anything and everything. Um, he's been, like, touching on it, staying ready in case, like, uh, if he needs to get back there. He's got it's always uh, exciting when you got a guy who can really, really run, and if he can be behind the plate, um, he's got a really good arm as well. You know, primarily he's going to be out in the outfield um, for playing time, especially when you got two other guys that are uh, older and and well well equipped behind the dish. Um, but he's just you know, hey, what do you need me to do? And I bet if I told him to go play shortstop or second base or first base, he'd grab a glove and go do it. Um, he's eager to help the guys win, so. Um, but, you know, it's the same thing with Forrester last year. Garrett would bug me and carry around his catcher's gear all the time. And I said, you can keep carrying it around, you know, <laughs> but he ain't going to put it on in the game. <laughs> but now that's what he's doing in the minor leagues a little bit too. Sure. So he lets me know that uh, I'll show you, which is exciting. <laughs> you know. well, we, we talked to, to, to go before too. Just what have you seen from him and sort of even – on practices and how he's developing and how he's learning from his first couple starts here. Yeah. Well, he's, he's the same guy at practice as he is in the game. It's just, you know, it, it's almost as if there's no one in the stands ever and uh, there's no one on base ever. He's just pretty relaxed and goes about his business. Even some of the situations that came up, how, I mean, we, we kicked a couple balls in the first inning for him and he, so he got five outs, you know, he just had to keep going. And I'm just watching body language, that tells me a lot, or pitch execution. And uh, I said, like, ice in his veins. He's just pretty neutral about everything, but he's also a fun guy to be around. The guys really enjoy him. Um, and he's got really good stuff. So I, we just got to keep finding ways to push him to get better and um, sharpen up the slider a little bit. Um, and he's doing a good job with the changeup, getting lefties out. Will you stack your starters like you did last weekend if, if Aiden doesn't go? Will it be a similar rotation? Um, no, I think we've already switched up with you. You already switched up with them, Hank. Yeah, yeah. We're gonna. He just does what you say, so you can tell us. I <laughs> you didn't listen to me. <laughs> uh, no, uh, Keljo's gonna go uh, start uh, Thursday, Thursday, and then we'll do Hunter, and then uh, Kamats and Sugura. Okay. This week. Okay. So. So you just said no May then? Slight plot twist. <laughs> As of right now. Okay, okay. But, uh, you know me. I so just, that's flexing. Things. We might stretch and, and play uh, and practice at 1, and I might push it back. If there's rain coming at 2, I might push practice till 2. You're flexible. Yeah. I'm not flexible. <laughs> Nimble. Physically. You used to be mentally, flexible. Mentally, very. <laughs> but physically, no. Do, yeah. do you feel you can be more cautious with Aiden because of the way Sigurdsson's pitch and Kamatsu's pitch? Do you feel like you maybe can afford at this point in the season to be more cautious with him at this point? Well, there's a lot that goes into it. I think uh, our offensive abilities um, allow us some, some freedom to do some stuff. Um, and also just having a lot of guys that we trust to go on the mound. I mean, uh, you know, last weekend uh, when, when Lawson wasn't, wasn't able to get out of the first, it takes a lot for the bullpen to then uh, pick up the slack and also having the 10 run rule in effect uh, preventing having to go out there and throw a couple extra innings I think it's just a lot that that plays into that um, but even in the case of May or any of those other guys I want to make sure that um, those outings when they do get those things it's like we're still building up into it we wouldn't go out and throw any of those guys who took the last week off even for Jaron last week strict yeah. Like uh, pitch count policy after not pitching for a week. Not that anything was wrong. It's just we haven't pitched, so you know that kind of just puts a little wave in the uh, the build up process. And I like, I mean, what we've seen out of uh, Ferg and what we've seen out of the handful of the other guys filling up the zone um, has been exciting. So apparently, I'm going to be a little tardy for you can our, go our meeting. We'll, we'll, we'll allow you to leave right now. We'll grant you permission. I appreciate that. Let's <laughs> go.